And so to move on to the receive side of the Midland 77810 Ready Rescue, this is the UK model. The first thing we need to do is to connect the speaker output to the test instruments. Of course, normally we just plug the test instruments into the three and a half mil jack socket on the back. But of course, the snag with this, it doesn't have an external speaker socket. So we just have to get one of our crocodile clip leads and hopefully we'll just have to go on to the center. And we are connected to the test instruments. Um, once again, I've had time to put another camera on so we can look at those. If I select on the video mixer, picture in picture camera two. And what we're listening to, I don't know what we're listening to, it's a right racket. Um, So we have one microvolt. So I've come to the conclusion, therefore, that T5, 6, 7, and 8 will be the receive, and the detector is where oh I think it's seven five six detector eight I'm going to start with the detector and what we're going to do is put a hundred microvolt signal on with sufficient amplitude to see that on the left hand oscilloscope it's not good with the I'll just take the bench light off just so you can see that better and what I believe to be the detector coil. So it's maximum amplitude we're looking for. No, that's not it. I am barking up the wrong tree, as they say. It's that one. So it's eight. So before I carry on with that, If I'd got a better circuit diagram, I could have worked this out better, but it's photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy. Now I've knocked my crocodile clip lead off. So maximum amplitude. That didn't need adjustment, it was absolutely correct as it was set. So we're going to go down to the lowest possible signal which is one microvolt. And see whether we can get a bit more out of this radio. So looking at the cyanide meter, we're hoping to move it to the left of the meter as the sensitivity improves. So starting with L6. I'll drop the signal generator down. 0 0.9 of a microvolt. No. And then T7, which is what I thought was the detector. Definite peak there. Drop the signal generator down. And I'll just go through those again. Because they're often interactive. So I'll do T6 again. T5. T7. Nope, that's it. It's not the most sensitive set in the world. Just here, 0 0.3. So drop it down 
Well, it's a bit better than the Alba CBM5 we did last. Um, well, that's it, because there's no... Is there? There's no... No more to it. It doesn't have a meter. Ah, I know what we need to do. We need to do the squelch. I'll turn the signal generator off. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to reposition the camera so you can see this. So moving over to the squelch now, I've get myself out of the camera view. I've put the camera on the attenuator controls of the signal generator. What we're going to do is switch the signal generator off and set the squelch control to threshold. I'll just make the all the signal generators on its absolute minimum, which is 0.06 of a microvolt. And what we're now going to do is switch the signal generator on. And we'll advance it until it comes in. Well, it came in at one microvolt. Should have been at the other end. So it's coming in 0.65 of a microvolt. Now I'm going to set the squelch to full on the radio. That's 3 microvolts, 10 microvolts, 30 microvolts, 100 microvolts, 300 microvolts, 1 volt. So although that's a bit harsh, especially for an emergency set, I do think that's fine the way it is set. But having said that, if you needed to adjust it, the preset is RV1 and RV1 I forgot to put that bench light back on I took it off for the last shot RV1 is just hiding this, the foam just there where the PTT switch is and there's that wire and the preset for the squelch is just down there So I'll tell you what, we will adjust it just a fraction. And now we'll see what our new results are. So signal generator to minimum and off. Set the thre squelch threshold. I'll just zoom that back out so we can actually see what we're doing. So signal generator on, advance it till it comes in. I've actually made it worse, it's less sensitive. <laughs> Threshold, signal generator on. Oh, that's all right. It's, point, it's coming in at 0.35 of a microvolt. Now I set the squelch to full, and we'll see where that comes in. One microvolt, three microvolts, ten microvolts, three micro, thirty microvolts, hundred microvolts, which is S9. Three hundred microvolts, and it's staying in till about plus ten. So that's all right. So that's the squelch set. That's all there is. That's all there is to set on a radio like this, which is, of course, a lot less features than a normal. It's a matter now of getting the thing back together. And I will go and screw that together in the other workshop, and I'll bring it back and I'll just plug it into the aerial. But it's actually 7.30 in the morning, so I don't know how many good budgies are about. So while I went to go and put that back together, I thought, oh, I can't resist the temptation to put the front case and the knobs through the company dishwasher. And so there we have it looking a bit more smart. I only had to unscrew the speaker and pull the microphone out and, uh, and it was as easy as that. So 
what are we now? Half past eight on a Thursday morning. And we'll just swap the test instruments and the radios come on on the background music system just to be in competition with me. Quick go through the channels. Well, Nana Roger. Well, there's somebody out there at the back of the box. So there we have it, the Midland Ready Rescue. And I've already got 77810 from April 1982. But just before I close this uh, video we'll just pop over to uh, Mr Chippy's bench because in looking for an aerial to use this on my little car thing tomorrow my car drive test drive tomorrow um, I've had to dig out some of the other emergency kits and I've realized we've only actually done a video on one emergency kit in all the years I've been doing this and that's the realistic 1004 and I can see that here but we so we don't need to touch that so we'll just go over to uh, the computer and then onto the uh, Mr. Chippy's uh, bench just to have a look at some of those. So I've just typed in um, emergency kit. We have a, um, I'll just go into uh, the screen. What we have, and I'll, I'll use this uh, walkie talkie aerial as a pointer. Um, style is E and that's in our parlance as emergency kit. Uh, we've got B for base, I think it's H for handheld, and M for mobile, so as easy as that. Uh, but E for emergency kit, and it may, enables me to um, very quickly find what we're looking for. Um, so, quickly do the browse. So, the, there's the Cobra SOS, it does have a number, is it something like, is it 69 or 61 or something like that? Uh, Cybernet ZX1. I've got one of those in the next room, I'll show you that. We do have the Cobra in stock. Um, it's missing half its case and its aerial, but it, at least we can do a video on that. The Harvard S, um, SOS H469, absolutely abysmal. Um, single conversion, if I remember rightly, um, screen. Um, it's three channel. I think it's 9, 19 and 30 or something like that. But it, it's a horrible piece of kit. That's well worth doing a video on. Uh, Maxcom 7E seems to be the most popular of them, and we've got three in those, and I'm going to pinch an aerial off one. So we've done the uh, just done the Midland Ready Rescue. We've previously done the realistic TRC 1004. The only other one is the Jason KT750, which I would think is well it's probably about 1985 so with that we'll go into the next room and we'll just look at some of those look at that for a lovely stack of junk so it's here's the cybernet zx1 easy com um my friend mark zx2 worked with him for donkey's years uh, when i was at nottingham radio um, he got me this off eBay from somebody at Nottingham and look that one's uh, that one's complete with its mag mount uh, not complete with its cigarette lighter plug so that's that's that one 
So that's probably the only made in Japan one we're going to see. So I'll put that one down. The most popular one seemed to be the Maxcom 17. All these kits are very tired. At, um, what have we got here? Well, we've got the, the radio, which these had a battery pack, which enabled you to use it as a, as a walkie talkie. Uh, and that one's not excessively corroded. You could detach that and just slip the radio out of the case. And of course, it's it's going to be the same. I was going to say it's going to be the same chassis because it's Maxcom, and and that Midland one I was just doing is clearly made by Maxon. And this had the advantage that you could put the rubber area that just fell on the floor onto there, and so you got a walkie-talkie with its own batteries. So I can see why these were popular. And this one has lost its cigarette lighter lead, but has its its mag mount. But it doesn't have its telescopic area, which it should have. So we've only got the rubber duck area. So that's not quite complete. Let's look at the next one. Now this one's got its cigarette lighter lead. It's got its battery pack, which isn't corroded. It's got nothing else. We'll be able to get one good one, won't we? This one... <laughs> What's in here? Got the radio, it's battery pack, which is a bit, little bit more corroded but not so unusable. This one's got its cigarette lighter lead and it's got its telescopic aerial. So that's brilliant. So we can put that on kit number one and do my little test. That's what we're going to borrow. We're going to borrow the Maxcon one. I will just check that it's got continuity. And then finally, we've got these awful Harvard SOF. I seem to remember paying a fortune for this. You know, somebody who advertised it on eBay as rare. It looks rare because everybody threw them away. Oh, look at this. It's got somebody's original CV license as well. Wow! <laughs> so, Borenwood, Hertfordshire. My goodness. Fantastic. So here you have emergency set which you can put batteries in. So it's got two 10 double A's into a battery pack. It's got its cigarette lighter lead. It's got its mag mount and it's got its nicely long telescopic aerial which you can put in the top as well as onto the mag mount. And then on the side you've got high low power. Now that could be useful. That could be useful because there's times when you, you want to conserve batteries and just do the 0.4 of a watt. So as I said earlier, oh it's 9, 14 and 30. So in this area, the activity would be 19, so that would be really, really not useful. Uh, and you've got on-off volume and squelch on some side wheels. But, yeah, I mean, it, it's different, isn't it? So, at least it's more or less complete, apart from the little flag you're supposed to have with it. Or have we got the... Oh, we've got, it's got the guarantee as well. Oh, I hope it works, I'll have to send it back. I've paid far too much for that. So there you have it. So really that was the Midland 788810 um, Ready Rescue uh, with a little bit of a, a chat there on other emergency sets which we can do as a forthcoming attraction. And we do have the Cobra one but the case is, I don't think the front's there on it. So thank you for watching.